Hello and welcome to Insurance Agents Talk Shop. I'm your host, Doug Coombs, Chief Marketing Officer at SIAA. Today's episode is Paving the Way for Agency Transformation at IA Evolve 2023. I'd like to introduce my guest and colleague, Lisa Grover, Vice President of Marketing at SIAA. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Doug. Happy to be here. In this episode, Lisa will give us an overview of what's on the agenda at this year's IA Evolve. From real solutions to networking opportunities, this conference is a must for anyone interested in technology and innovation and their impact on the independent insurance agency. And if we have time, we'll also ask Lisa to give us some insights into what takes put to, what it takes to put on a virtual event like this, you know, a, a peek behind the curtain, so to speak. So let's dive right in. Uh, Lisa, the uh, IA Evolve conference is coming up on September 12th, I believe. And for those who are unfamiliar, can you provide us with a brief overview of what exactly IA Evolve is? I can. And yes, it is approaching very quickly. We're very busy here behind the scenes. Um, I Evolve is a virtual conference uh, for independent agents that may be looking to advance their knowledge of the tools and the best practices to run a successful agency. And, but more than that, within the context of the world that we live in today, uh, and also ensuring some level of progression for the future. Um, so that could entail uh, trying to get your agency up to speed to meet the customer expectations of today. I mean, let's, let's uh, take a moment to reflect that um, while consumers are very used to and they expect to be able to get what they want when they want it online, they also turn to their independent agents for that personal touch. So just being able to navigate that, this conference addresses some of those uh, uh, tools and again, the, the means in which to get there and then operationally as well. So um, agencies have a lot in their infrastructure that can either make them very efficient or very inefficient. Um, so we, we try to have some content and some partners in the conference that will address those issues as well. So it, what I'm hearing is that this is pretty, a pretty widely encompassing uh, content that's included in this virtual conference. Exactly. We try very hard to uh, select from a large number of uh, speaking proposals that we receive each year to find one that's really got a nice mix and balance. So uh, we like uh, some of the sessions to address the marketing aspects, the operational aspects, service, and um, also uh, this year, we've added some context behind that, um, primarily around the current environment in which the agents find themselves. So um, we've talked a lot about a hard market of reason, and um, <laughs> that looks like and it might extend for some period of time. So we we're trying to put that as a backdrop for many of our sessions that we're planning. It's funny as you as you say that, and you mentioned the hard market. I'm I'm reminded that there's a uh, a members only uh, uh, panel discussion coming up for SIAA member agencies. Uh, but but uh, that and so I guess what I'm saying is that that panel discussion is reserved just for members. How about the IA Evolve conference? Is that just for members? Absolutely not. While we have a large number of attendees that are uh, from the rank and file membership, uh, we also have, um, a, you know, a good portion that are non-members. Um, so these might be independent agents uh, that are operating on their own. Um, they might belong to a competing network of SIAs, um, or uh, they might be a producer thinking about running an agency and what that would entail. Um, and we have uh, agencies of all sizes. So from the very early days, all the way through to um, uh, very experienced and mature agencies of size. Very good. So essentially anyone, anyone uh, it's really appropriate. It sounds like for any uh, agent or producer uh, who really wants to learn a little bit more about how they can transform their agency. 
Exactly. And, you know, that is part of our discussions when we pick the sessions is that we want to make sure that there is something for every type of agent. Very good. So this is actually your fourth time producing IA Evolve. How how, how has it changed? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the first thing, and I'm chuckling because uh, people know what a virtual conference is now, um, you know, having lived through a pandemic where um, the in-person events flock to virtual. When we first did this conference in 2019, that was not the case. Um, so I had many, many conversations <laughs> uh, with um, some of our exhibitors, our speakers, uh, prospective attendees, you know, well, where is it? You know, I don't understand. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so yeah, we've kind of, uh, gotten through that hurdle. So that's the biggest thing I would say. Um, but another thing I think in, in, you know, this is a more serious side of it. It's not all about when we first did it, it was really about the technology tools, you know, the, um, the agency management systems, uh, you know, anything that would make um, your digital uh, properties uh, grow and expand and be and be bigger and better than what they were. Um, and now we're really trying hard to um, make it about innovation more. So yes, um, digital tools are a big part of that innovation, um, but there's other best practices and methodologies. Uh, that are worth hearing about, um, very forward thinking um, uh, practices that we're trying to wrap into the conference content as well. Well, actually, you're making me remember that the the first event was pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. So, so to your point previously, um, you know, people were not as, had not yet been forced to use virtual uh, meetings and conferences uh, as, a, as a, a means of interacting and communicating. And so I have to wonder, what was the motivation originally behind creating this event, IA Evolve? Um, well, it was really the convergence of two big ideas or um you know, audacious goals is what we like to call them around here. Um, So the marketing department, uh, we had been exposed to virtual conference, Um, not to name drop or anything, but uh, Marketing Props is a wonderful organization um, and they have a lot of smart people there. And I've been a big follower of theirs for years. And they were holding virtual conference events Oh, gosh, more than a decade ago. <clears throat> and I had thought they were really, really cool. I enjoyed them. And I had never seen anything like that in um, the insurance industry. Um, so I had been kind of floating this idea and talked to you, Doug. And, you know, you and I had had many exciting conversations about that. Um, and that, so that was sort of in the early days, percolating the idea, who would come, who would we invite, et cetera, um, what, you know, and what would the theme of it be? So we were still kind of tossing that around. And then um, as with many companies, there's other initiatives sort of percolating in other areas. Um, so we have a technology and innovation, uh, not technically a department, but we have folks a cross-functional team that work on that. <clears throat> and uh, more precisely, they're working to develop our membership base's ability um, to do things like uh, intelligently select a tech stack um, and really just trying to move that uh, thinking forward throughout the membership of our organization. And so they were kind of throwing around ideas And so it was really just sort of two teams that sort of got together one day. And it just so happened that these uh, two big ideas, if you will, converged into this idea of a virtual conference that would be open to both members and others outside of the organization. And it really would serve to do both things, right? So um, it would expose our members to a lot of forward thinking ideas around the adoption. At that time, it was digital technologies. Um, And then from the marketing standpoint, we really wanted to um, create a means in which uh, to bring both our internal subject matter experts and those that we partner with and have relationships with 
to the forefront and sort of package them up um, because that really was sort of representative of our the way our brand um, was heading. In fact, we we just have you know a lot of subject matter experts, and we really wanted to get them some exposure outside of the walls of the SI headquarters. Got it. So, so you know, as you're talking, it uh, I was thinking about my next question, and and it and it hits me that I, I believe that the conference was the first of its kind, at least in the insur- independent uh, agency channel space. And so here we are uh, in 2023, and now there's been some time for others to see what we do, how we do it. So mm-hmm. there is more of it happening out there in the space, I, I, I presume. And I'm I'm wondering, is there something that still differentiates or makes the IA Evolve Conference different from what other events are being put on out there? Yeah, and, and I'm glad you said we're the first because we still sort of hang on to that premier virtual conference in our in our conference t- <laughs> conference description. Um, um, and you know, in many ways, it is similar to in person conferences um, in that there's almost like a simulated environment. You feel like you're going into a place. It's not just a 2D website where you would click into different sessions. Um, and um, again, it's very similar in that we have sessions uh, with along different tracks. We have exhibitor booths. We have um, networking lounge and other things that you might find uh, at an in-person event. Um, unlike that, it doesn't cost our attendees anything. They have no travel expenses. They just need to log in and, you know, it's really just the opportunity cost of not spending time on something else. Um, I would argue it's well worth uh, the investment. Um, It's accessible. So uh, we do cater to a wide audience. um, And so there really is something for everybody here. It's not just the smartest, the biggest in the room, right? So um, it, we do try to have content that is a wide range of uh, interest for our audiences. Um, so yeah. with that, I think um, in many ways we're the same, but different. And I think there's, there's room for, for all of us. Um, and I'll just add to that. We do try to select a large number of sessions that include their peers. So um, I do think it's important to hear what other agents are doing Um, along the lines of, you know, not just what technology they use, but how did they do it? Um, And uh, again, it's not just producers. It's just not all agency owners. Um, It is really anyone in the industry can learn something by attending this conference. And, And you can pick and choose which sessions you want, right? So you can log in ahead of time, register, look at the agenda, and pick those that uh, pertain to you and your interest. And um, you can always go back and listen to some, uh, if someone walks in and they needed something, you know, serviced right away, or, you know, there's, you know, some emergency, you can pop out and then just come back later and visit the recorded session. You would miss the interactivity and the ability to ask questions in sessions. So we do like people to attend. And it's kind of fun when everybody's chatting at the same time that it's going on. Uh, but um, it's, it's definitely uh, a fun and day and it goes by very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Almost too fast given all the preparation that goes into it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's funny as you, as you were uh, talking just now, uh, I was thinking about that and I suppose there were probably some segment of the, uh, of the IA uh, population that have yet to attend a virtual conference uh, and I would assume that there are a number who have attended one or two. And I, I do think that it's important that uh, the listeners understand that not all of these virtual conferences are created equally. And, and I say that because you mentioned a 2D conference versus uh, IA Evolve, which is a 3D conference. And, and I remember our conversations early on. There were two things that I think we identified as critical. And one was the overall experience. Mm-hmm. which I, th- I think 
is really ad addresses the issue of the 3D conference, a little more experiential, um, just the feel, the look, that sort of thing. And then the other th uh, the other item, and you've, you've already addressed this, is the peer-to-peer -peer interaction, both in terms of who is presenting and who is you know, talking in the different sessions that are available, but also in terms of the networking uh, inside the conference. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's like a nice common thread through all of the events that you've put together so far. Yeah, I mean, peer-to-peer -peer is uh, going to be a big part of this year's conference. Um, and um, not just in attending sessions and uh, attending panel discussions, discussing different ways that agents approach a, a similar challenge, um, but also um, within the other parts of the environment. So the networking session, um, the group chats, um, even at the booth, if you're already doing business uh, with a particular vendor or partner, I mean, stop by and say hello. The longer I'm in this industry, which is uh, now 13 plus years for me, uh, the more it feels like uh, it's a small world. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this this is a great way to make it even smaller, right? So we do have um, a history of attracting, you know, some of some of the folks in the industry that are really um, so generous with sharing um, both the lessons that they learned, the challenges that they overcame. And um, that is one thing that uh, I just love about the independent agency channel is as a rule, they're very generous. They're not keeping everything close to the vest. So the speakers are available to share as well as the other attendees through the networking lounge and other areas of that. Um, so uh, again, it's highly encouraged, but we don't have to try that hard. We just have to set them up in the right environment and it just happens organically. Got it. So a couple of questions before I forget. So just wanna confirm that the, the conference uh, does take place on September 12th. Uh, can people register now? Yes, yep, we're open for registration. Um, even as we still are, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's on, you know, panelists and things like that, they're registering now. Uh, by the time this airs, hopefully everything will be completely buttoned up. Um, and, um, you know, it, and the reason I say that is we've actually just added more sessions. Um, so we've had so many, <laughs> so many great, um, uh, you know, content ideas that um, I, I was going to really try hard to keep it to a single day um, with no concurrent, but um, it looks like we're going to be adding a, a couple concurrent sessions. Got it. So that, so folks would go to iaevolve.com to, to make that, to do that registration. Yes. Thank you for highlighting that. I should have. Sure. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and, and, and the other other item uh, is that the conference day itself, and, and I think that this is important too, uh, starts from when and goes to when. Yep. Um, so this is a challenge, right? Where the whole uh, East to West Coast uh, is attending. So we are starting at 11 a.m. and we're running to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Got it. And so th it's funny. I just want to make a quick comment that I remember on the first uh, the, the first conference that was held. Uh, it was it was five o'clock, and and you could all you could see that the activity that was still there from the West Coast. It really seemed to me, uh, and I think it's important to note that uh, that the conference is certainly intended to uh, appeal to agents across the country, not just in one regional location. I remember that well, and, and we none of us really knew what to do because there was still hundreds of people in the lobby in the networking lounge, and so we did just let them remain in there, but the sessions had all ended. Right. <laughs> but, but the good part, and this goes back to the peer-to-peer, -peer, there was a lot of uh, networking going on in the networking lounge, as I recall. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and people were still chasing down um, their last um, – you know, so we do conduct a fun leaderboard uh, where people gain points um, for different activities, you know, so we do like to encourage interactivity. Um, and so we, you know, we, 
we had folks that were in there at the last minute still kind of looking for their hidden um hidden gems that they could collect <laughs> when the prizes so um we are bringing that part back um it's it's just one of the things that people really like gotcha yeah and it, it, it adds a little fun to the day and i think that that's worthwhile yeah. Yeah. yeah so so while we're talking about uh the components uh, of the conference, um, the tech expo. Can you talk a little bit about how that works and, you know, how do people actually enter? I, I, I'm obviously thinking that people will be visualizing what they would do if they were at a conference and they visited the trade show and they would go from booth to booth. Can you talk a little bit about how that works virtually? Yeah. So, um, and I'll just back out to, you know, you actually enter a building, you know, through your mouse clicking and then you go through the lobby where you can go. I'm getting to the exhibit hall. Trust me. I believe uh, it. <laughs> you know, where you have options to go into different quote rooms. Right. So once you enter the exhibit hall, it's pretty cool. It's, you're kind of going to look down at it 3d and you can click into the different booths. Um, so either a name that you recognize or, or type of solution that you're looking for. And we will have a wide variety there. Um, so we've got everything from agency management systems, CR, CRMs, uh, some marketing solutions, you know, and then down to like, you know, digital signatures, right? So um, data integration. So uh, that's, a, that's a big challenge for some. And then we'll even have some carriers uh, that um, have some innovative you know, maybe rating, quoting platforms, marketing resources, or other forward-thinking solutions uh, just, that are just designed to making to make doing business with them easier. Got it. Yeah, uh, so that's worthwhile in terms of uh, it, it maybe even if you are on the East Coast, it seems to me that you might want to get in a little bit earlier than eleven in order to to make those connections. Yeah, uh, yeah, there'll there'll be um I forgot to mention this. There'll be actual booth representatives, just like at a regular trade show. Um, and you can privately speak with them through the private chat or, um, most tend to, um, gravitate towards the group chat. Um, again, it's a peer to peer thing. Um, and so they'll have a number of things at their booth from, you know, handouts or videos you can watch, um, making appointments with them for a demo, et cetera. It's really up to them how they want to um, trick out their booth, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, yeah, I, let's talk about that for just a moment. What, what kind of effort goes into that? I'm thinking about this from a visual perspective, right? As I try to go through the, uh, go through the, the trade show or the tech expo. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm looking around and, and, and I'm actually seeing artwork, right? When I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um They'll design their booth. So in the past, and um, any of my, our previous uh, exhibitors are going to love to hear this, right? So in the past, we used to do a lot of the build for them. Well, all of it, really. So the staff here um, would engage with the sponsors, collect their materials, and we would build their booth for them and brand it for them and whatnot. We actually have a, a much slicker, cleaner uh, environment where they can go in and do it all themselves now um, and see it real time, what it's going to look like and so forth. So for them, it's it's a lot, um, they can relate to it a lot better because they can just see it build right before their eyes. Right. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. Of course, I would guess that we're still going to do a fair amount of helping of the build. Um, but um, anyway, I'm pretty excited. It's a new uh, platform that we're using this year. So there's a, it's a lot more lifelike and it has a lot more features than our previous year. So I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. sounds like you should be, cause it sounds mm -hmm. like it's, it's a, it's going to be a good setup. I, um, I'm wondering, <clears throat> I realize there's a lot of content that's going to be there, both in terms of what the, uh, the, the booth uh, folks are going to be interacting with, uh, how they'll be interacting with those who visit, and then also the the sessions, the the content uh, of the different sessions. Uh, it is a lot, I realize. But are are there one, two, or three that you might want to draw people's attention to in terms of what will be offered? 
Well, um, sure. Um, favorite every time um, is we do always bring in, or at least we have every year so far, um, we bring in Matt Massiello, our CEO, um, and we work with him to do a session. So he's done a keynote before. He's been uh, in like a, a, a point counterpoint discussion with others in the past. And each year we try to make it a little different. So this year he's designing a panel um, that will um, highlight some really forward thinking agencies um, and what they're doing uh, just to give inspiration for those in the audience. And uh, for those that have had the opportunity to see Matt speak, um, it's always a favorite. Um, and then we have other panels as well. That's one thing we have learned um, over the years is that panels resonate. People like panels. They want to hear from their peers. So um, we have... Mm, three panels thus far planned um, of varying sizes um, of agents. Um, and for example, one is on the um, adoption of data and analytics to address some of your hiring and managing and retention strategies. So we've never broached into the area of staffing before. So I'm very excited about that one. And, um, the, our friends at P, uh, PeopleSense will be bringing in some uh, agents um, who have actually successfully built teams using this type of um, data. And um, gosh, we have some topics around using AI this year. So I thought that was important. Everybody's talking about chat GPT and all of these things, but for the everyday agency owner, like, what does that look like? Am I falling behind by not using it? How would I use it? Um, so these are some of the things we're trying to make sure that we have at least a couple of sessions talking about. Um, and then we have our old standbys. So, you know, how to optimize your website, you know, that's just an ongoing challenge in today's world to be found. Um, and to drive leads to your business. So um, we have some of those, um, you know, digital best practices um, in the queue here. And as well as, again, some that kind of step out of the typical conversations around adopting technology. Uh, for example, we have one about how to prepare for a carrier rep visiting your agency and how to improve relationships. So as we know, the carrier reps come by and uh, visit with their agents. Like, what can you do to get the most out of that? And that does include pulling certain reports, right? So again, tied back to the technology, but in the context of the world that we're living in today. Okay, sounds good. So I, mm -hmm. it's funny, I, I'll tie back to the fact that uh, given that uh, artificial intelligence or AI is all the rage these days, that you would have a, a session or two that kind of focuses on that. Be because to your point, I, I think folks hear a lot about it, but don't necessarily understand how it actually is utilized or could be utilized within their own agency and even their day-to-day -day interactions. Exactly. So practical applications, you know, if there's two words I could use to summarize the content, <laughs> uh, it would be that. That's excellent. So, <laughs> so given that and understanding now, um, and, and I'm, I'm thinking, looking at the clock and realizing that we're, we're going to run out of time, but I think it's important maybe to provide uh, some tips or suggestions, given the fact that there is a lot of content uh, mm -hmm. at the conference. How do attendees make the most of their experience, do you think, when they, when they, as they approach the day? Yeah, well, what I would suggest is, you know, first of all, register early so you get it on your calendar and the time is blocked, right? Yeah. And then go in and explore the agenda. Um, select the se sessions that are the most meaningful to you. And, you know, as we know, things happen during the day. So um, I understand that not everybody can spend six hours at their desk attending a conference, although some do, and I encourage it. 
Um, but go ahead and pick um, maybe the three sessions that you absolutely uh, want to attend. And then also um, select the, um, the sponsors that you might want to speak with. Um, and once you're once you do that, um, you're able to then schedule a time with um, an exhibitor uh, right at their booth um, for a later date if you don't have the time to spend with them that day. Uh, just, but just being very deliberate and have purpose about the conference will be the best way for you to get the most out of it. And then I say, I would end on this, is please make sure that you also see who else is there reach out their um social media will be available in case you want to connect with them on linkedin or other areas on um social media and just leverage the conference as a way of being introduced to some that you either want to meet or that you're impressed by at the conference got it that makes all the sense in the world i um i'm wondering uh, I know that the interaction is important, but for folks who can absolutely not get there, will there be, or, or they miss a set or a certain session that they wanted to see uh, mm -hmm. or, or hear, uh, will there be content accessible after the date of the event? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it will be available on demand uh, every session. Um, and I believe it'll be, uh, if not immediately after, it will be there the following day. Um, so you would still register for the event um, and then just use that link to jump into the environment. Um, the booths will still be there in the exhibit hall. They just won't be staffed. Um, but you have a way to message the folks there and, and download any of the materials that, or watch videos that they have. Um, and again, all of the sessions will be available in the auditorium as, uh, you know, on demand. Right. And I will stress for folks that um, that is not nearly because we've uh, Lisa and I have both actually tested that the approach of going in post event. And, and, and even though the content is there and it still has value, that there's nothing quite the same as actually being there uh, the, at the time the event is taking place live, having that interaction with your peers, being able to ask questions as you hear the presentations uh, by both the presenters and the panels. So it's a, it's a, a, a valuable and a worthwhile uh, event to make sure you schedule on your calendar. Absolutely. And, you know, we have a lot of generous folks that are um, heading up these sessions. So our speakers, our panelists, um, so, uh, it, it does support them as well. If they actually have a large body <laughs> <laughs> of folks in the audience. So, yeah. um, you know, I like to see the room full. I remember that first, um, first conference and it's sort of like throwing a big party and you don't know if anyone's going to show up. So, <laughs> I had a, a very high level of anxiety. And then when we saw that tick over a thousand, I mean, I think, you know, we all just sort of got it really, really excited um, that there would be a thousand people in our little virtual conference uh, in that first year. It was pretty exciting. And it went well up and over that um, ultimately, but that was, that was quite a milestone. And uh, every year we hope to beat the year previous so right <laughs> <laughs> fingers crossed fingers crossed <laughs> all right well uh we have run out of time lisa thank you for joining me today i really do appreciate you spending some time with me on on uh talking about ia evolve 2023 and um i want to remind everyone that our guest today has been lisa grover vice president of marketing at siaa uh, Lisa, thank you again for joining me. Um, that was my pleasure. And uh, iEvolve.com. So that's iAevolve.com, September 12th. Terrific. And for our listeners, thanks for tuning in to Insurance Agents Talk Shop. I'm Doug Coombs, Chief Marketing Officer at SIAA. To learn more about SIAA, the Agent Alliance, please visit SIAA.com. And if you enjoyed today's conversation, please subscribe to the show. Thank you, everyone. Thanks again, Lisa. Bye.